Hello, my name is Dr. Dominic Guarino. I'm the Senior Scientific Advisor here at KCAS. Today, I'd like to share with you some of the exciting stuff we've been up to. In the last couple years, the company has grown in size from 60 employees to 120 employees. One of the major areas of growth is our immunogenicity services, and I get the pleasure of telling you about some of those services. The types of services that we provide for support of anti-drug antibodies vary from a wide range of drugs as well as over a wide range of disease states. They include such things as anti-drug conjugates or ADCs, fusion proteins, which can be somewhat tricky given the nature of multiple sources of proteins being put together, gene therapies, which again is somewhat of a tricky area in that frequently it's not the actual therapeutic itself, it's the target that the therapy is trying to augment that is when you start to look for antibodies against that compound. Also a wide range of monoclonal antibodies, such things as uh, protein therapeutics as well, uh, and, and oligonucleotides, uh, which are, is a, again a very tricky area given the innate nature of oligonucleotides. The most commonly used format for the support of immunogenicity is the bridging assay. The assay that we perform here at KCS utilizes the measles gill discovery platform. This assay uses the drug itself to pull out the anti-drug antibody from the sample. And that is done by typically biotinylating the drug and then adding a ruthidium label to the drug. And therefore, it forms a bridge when the antibody binds to each of those respective labeled drugs. Then you add it to an avidin plate and it adheres to the plate and you can get a signal. This gives you a good sensitivity. It also has typically a fair amount of drug tolerance. However, if drug tolerance is an issue, there are alternatives such as the affinity capture and elution assay or the ACE assay, as well as the solid phase extraction with acid dissociation or the so-called SPED assays, all things we can help support at KCAS. The other component of immunogenicity is typically a neutralizing antibody assay, and that's commonly done as a cell-based assay, again, another service we do here, as well as uh, target depletion, which is commonly done if there is a need to test with a high degree of drug presence, or what they call drug on board. I'd like to share with you a case study performed here at KCAS. This was in support of an anti-drug antibody conjugate. We had two methods that were validated for this ADA, they were in Sino and human matrix. And during sample analysis of the human population, we observed an increased control failure. A formal investigation was started, and the root cause of this control failure was identified as an issue with how we set the cut point for the validation, which was using normal donors. And then when we went to do sample analysis, that is in a disease state. So the investigation led us to this observation, we went ahead and screened a variety of baseline samples from the patients. This was presented to BTS Life Sciences and evaluated and determined that the, indeed the naive samples and the disease state were different populations. So this has resulted in us establishing a new cut point for use in the bio study. And as you can see here, we have some data showing the validation log ratio mean and variance, and then the bio study, as well as the percent inhibition mean and variance and as you can see, there's a wide degree of difference between the two. And this was what led us to reestablishing the cut point for the bio study. Thank you again for your time today. We have so many great things going on here at KCAS. If you would like to know more about us, please visit kcasbio.com for more information.